Okay, this video is the product of a discussion or debate I had with General Bardak, who's another uh, Civ player, Twitch streamer, in the NQ group. Arguably the best NQ player. Very, very strong Sim player, very, very strong War player. And we are arguing about how aqueducts work. Which is kind of a strange thing to argue about, right? I mean, everybody knows how aqueducts work, right? Right? I mean, definitely the devs, the game developers, they know how aqueducts work, right? It actually seems that basically no, people don't know how aqueducts work. How exactly they, they function as a building. And so I decided to look into it. <laughs> and it's kind of interesting because here in the Civilopedia, Right at the start, it says 40% of food is carried over after a new citizen is born. Which, the way I would interpret that is, if you have an aqueduct in your city, your city grows, 40% of the food that it took to grow gets banked and added to your food total for the next population. That seems to make sense. That's the basic interpretation. What could be wrong? What could be confusing? Well, the next description is... The aqueduct decreases the amount of food a city needs to increase in size by 40%. These two things are not the same. The growth uh, equation for sieve, for cities, is exponential. That is, each time you grow, the amount of food you need to grow to the next population is higher than the one before. So these two descriptions are not the same thing. They can't be the same thing. This is 40% of the last population is carried over, and this is 40% of the next population is carried over. So already you're in trouble. We've got conflicting explanations here. What's even worse is I have UI, which does a number of nice things. One of the things it does is it gives this tooltip for aqueducts, plus 40% population growth. It even gives me a yield. It says my aqueduct is yielding 7.6 food. Well, I don't see this here. This is like an invisible food that I get presumably when I grow. So I get 40% of the food it takes to grow while my aqueduct is built. And that gets banked for next time. Right? So once I build my aqueduct, I get an invisible plus 40% food for my next population growth. That might sound like it's the same as tooltip number one here but it's not really because this kind of implies that regardless of when the aqueduct is, is built as long as you have an aqueduct before you grow 40 percent of food is carried over whereas this tooltip suggests that only once you build the aqueduct do you get the plus 40 percent population growth so right now already we have three conflicting explanations of how the aqueduct works so which one's correct? I'll give you uh, a spoiler alert. None of them are correct. Not exactly. Okay, so Bogota is growing this turn. Just by pure chance, I happen to have exactly the amount of food I need to grow to 12 pop. This is very useful because any food I have next turn in my city will be the amount of food provided to me by the aqueduct. So that'll make calculating what the aqueduct provided very simple. Let's go and hit next turn, see how much food I have. So, I have 33 banked towards 93. It took me 80 food, 84 food to grow last time. So, now we can figure out what exactly the percent of food that is carried over. 33 divided by 93 is not 40%. It's 35.8%. So, this strategy tooltip is wrong. The aqueduct does not decrease the amount of food a city needs to grow in size by 40%. If it did, I would have 40% of the way to the next pop already, and I don't. But, if you divide um, 33 by 84, you get 39.2%. Which is pretty darn close to 
which suggests that what actually has happened is um, it got rounded down to the nearest integer. So the amount of food I had took taken to grow to 12 pop was multiplied by 40% and rounded down to the nearest integer. And that was the food I got banked. Okay, that makes sense. So that means it's either this explanation, the plus 40% population growth, or it's this explanation that when you have an aqueduct in your city, you, you start the next population with 40% of the food from the previous population. So we can test it here. Pamplona is growing in two turns. It's aqueduct is finishing in two turns. What we can do is avoid growth next turn and see how much excess food we end up with. So we want to avoid growth so we get to maximum food. Finish the aqueduct and then see what our overflow is. Gotta stay happy in the meantime. Okay, so the aqueduct is finished. We can take it off avoid growth. We're at maximum food. We're working 13 food. So whatever we have banked next turn, minus 13 is going to be the food provided for the aqueduct. Because we'll have 13 from the food yield, and then whatever is left, that will be what the aqueduct yielded us. So the question is, will, will it be 40% of what it took to grow to pop 8? Or will it be 40% of food since the time I built my aqueduct? Which, 40% of 13... Oh, it would be around five-ish, five and a half. So if it's that, that'll mean it's the EUI explanation. If it's a flat, if it's 40% towards the next pop, then it means it's this explanation. So let's see what it is. Okay, so we're 26 food towards our next pop. That's not 40% of the way to 67. It's not 40% of uh, 59, which is what it took to grow to 9 pop. It's also not the 40% of the food yield since I built my aqueduct. So actually, none of those tooltip explanations are correct. What it is is you can see, I, I had a food yield of 13 last turn. And I have 26 food banked this turn. Is it pure coincidence that the food I have banked is double my food yield of last turn? No. This is how aqueducts actually work. The uh, analogy I'm going to use is from Affenbright, who is sort of... Uh, uh, the one who sort of unlocked this uh, explanation for us. So uh, credit goes to him. Basically, the way an aqueduct works is you've got two buckets. You've got bucket A, you've got bucket B. Your aqueduct doubles your food production. It puts half of it into bucket A, which is helping you grow to the next pop, and it's putting half of it in bucket B, which is what you're banking for the next population after that. The catch is that bucket B has this cap, this 40% cap. The aqueducts will only fill bucket B up until 40% of what you need to grow to the next pop. And no more. So the aqueduct doubles your food production, but only up until that cap of 40% of what you need until the next pop. So this is different from any of the tooltips um, explanations. When you have an aqueduct in your city and you're just growing normally, it kind of functions effectively like this tooltip, where it's 40% population growth. 
but really the way it's working is for those first few turns of growth it is doubling your food until you reach that 40 percent cap and then it provides no additional food so it's not really a flat plus 40 percent population growth it's actually a plus 100 percent uh food bonus not just growth bonus but food bonus until 40 percent until 40 percent of the way until the next population and then it stops working until you grow again that's very complicated that's very counterintuitive but that's how it works so the question is how can we exploit that how can we use that to improve our games well here's portobello it's growing uh, next turn it's building its acra next turn but we know that between when the ac this aqueduct finishes because of the food is almost reached the next population once we finish our aqueduct it will double our food yield for a turn until the next population growth so really what we want to do is we want to click avoid growth this turn and then next turn after our aqueduct is finished I gotta get rid of this uh, this image so I finished the aqueduct here in Portobello um, now I can work pure few food because this looks like a two food tile but really because the aqueduct is doubling my food production it's really like a four food tile I'm kind of overflowing food like barracks overflow or shrine, shrine overflow when you have those uh, half cost policies and all the excess hammers you put into your barracks over a shrine overflow is also doubled it kind of works like that where between when you finish your aqueduct and your next population growth you get double food up until that 40 percent cap but if you build it if you finish your aqueduct you know three or four turns before you, your city grows again then you effectively have double food for that duration that's kind of interesting you can use that to get a bunch of extra food by carefully microing your your aqueduct builds so next turn because i'm working 10 food this turn i'll have 20 food banked when i finish um when I, when I grow the next turn. Because it's doubling my food production this turn, the aqueduct. So there we go, we're 20 out of 59. It doubled my food last turn. Now, from growing to eight until nine pop, what'll happen is it'll double my food effectively and visibly for the first few turns until that 40% cap and then when I grow from eight to nine pop, that 40% of um, the 59 food it took to grow will be added uh, to start from nine to 10 pop. That is how the aqueduct works. So basically, the idea is the way to micro it is you want to finish your aqueduct before you grow in a city and then work maximum food until you grow again because you're overflowing that food kind of similar to the way you're overflowing with hammers because the way the aqueduct actually works is it doubles your food until it reaches that 40 percent cap once you've built your aqueduct and you've grown you can effectively treat it like this tooltip says you can effectively treat it like plus 40 percent population growth it's not actually how it works but that's basically how it how you can treat it and it's kind of an interesting trick or an interesting thing to know because Civ 5 has all these weird features like this which the devs probably didn't intend or didn't understand and now we actually know this is how an aqueduct works the way it works it doubles your food invisibly up until that 40 percent cap and then that 40 percent is banked for the next population growth that should hopefully end this long running debate this debate's been going on for years as to how exactly the aqueduct works and now thanks to uh Affenbright and thanks to general bardak we know for sure